Enzymes. Enzyme definition. Enzymes are proteins. They accelerate the rate of a chemical reaction. Enzymes are catalysts that promote the same reaction over and over without being used up in the reaction. They are neither product nor reactant. Enzymes require metal atoms as cofactors to function, such as magnesium and calcium. Catalyst definition. A catalyst is a substance that accelerates the rate of a chemical reaction without itself being used up or changed. E sub A equals the energy of activation. Let's take a look at this graph. Here we see energy on the vertical axis while we see the reaction process on the horizontal axis. Notice the uncatalyzed reaction and its activation energy. Delta G is the difference between the reactant's base state and the product's energetic state. This is a picture of the enzyme catalyzed reaction. Notice how the activation energy has been lowered, that is the energy required to form products has been decreased. Active site definition. The active site is the location on the enzyme where the catalysis of the chemical reaction takes place. Here we can see this huge enzyme, it's in pink, binding a small molecule in the enzyme's active site. Substrate definition. A substrate is a molecule that an enzyme acts on. The substrate is bound to the enzyme's active site and the enzyme catalyzes a specific chemical reaction involving the substrate. Here the enzyme, beta-lactamase, is binding to penicillin, that's its substrate. Introduction to Enzymes Enzymes are organic biological proteins. Enzymes are essential for many life-sustaining biological processes. Enzymes are highly specific for their substrates and can process millions of molecules every second, having high turnover rates. Catalase can turn over 40 million substrate molecules per second. There are multiple mechanisms for regulating enzymes, including inhibition and enzyme degradation. Protein structure, enzyme structure. The amino acid sequence is the primary structure of a protein. The amino acid sequence, primary structure, dictates how a protein will fold, and the folding of a protein determines how it will function. All enzymes are proteins, with the exception of a ribozyme. Primary structure and peptide bonds. The primary structure is the linear number and order of the amino acids. This is in a protein. Here you can see the amino acids being linked via a peptide bond. This would form a protein or at least a polypeptide chain. The formation of the peptide bond releases water because the peptide bond formation is a dehydration reaction. On one end of the amino acid chain, you'll find the N-terminal. It's the first amino acid. The last amino acid is the C-terminal. Active site, the business end. The region of an enzyme that binds the substrate and then carries out the catalytic reaction is called the active site. The amino acids that make up the active site may be far apart in the primary sequence, but are brought near one another when the protein folds into its three-dimensional structure. Enzyme specificity is determined by the active site's three-dimensional structure. 
Changes in the active site structure will change the enzyme's activity. The substrate binds to the active site by non-covalent bonds. It's oriented in a way that favors the necessary collisions for product formation. Once the product is formed, its bonds are different from the reactants. As a result, the enzyme releases the product. Enzyme activity. Because enzymes are selective for a substrate, a cell determines which metabolic pathway will occur by regulating which enzymes are made. Let's take a look at this schematic. Enzymes specific for a substrate. Most biochemical processes need enzymes in order to occur at the required rate. Here we see the substrate entering the active site of the enzyme and an enzyme substrate complex formed. You'll see this abbreviated ES in the future. The enzyme changes shape slightly as the substrate binds. The enzyme products complex. The molecules at the beginning of the reaction are called substrates and they get converted. This is then called the product and products leave the active site of the enzyme because you can see they no longer have the correct conformation. Absolute specificity. Enzyme specificity includes reaction, substrate, stereo, and absolute specificity. These criterion may overlap. Let's take a look at examples of each type of enzyme reaction. In absolute specificity, the enzyme is specific for a particular reaction rather than a particular substrate. For instance, the enzyme staphylococcal nuclease will degrade any type of nucleic acid regardless of the sequence of the nucleic acid. This is reaction specificity. Group specificity. The enzyme is specific for a group of molecules with related structure. The enzyme acts only on molecules that have specific functional groups such as amino, phosphate, and methyl groups. For instance, xylose isomerase. It is involved with D-glucose isomerization. Here we can see a more schematic example of the isomerization that takes place due to the activity of xylose isomerase. Linkage specificity. In linkage specificity, the enzyme is specific for a type of chemical bond regardless of the rest of the molecular structure. For instance, an enzyme that phosphorylates or dephosphorylates a substrate, such as alkaline phosphatase. High blood levels of alkaline phosphatase can be measured and may indicate bone or liver malignancies. Stereospecificity. Enzymes that are specific for a particular steric or optical isomer are called stereospecific enzymes. Alcohol dehydrogenases, ADH, are examples of stereospecificity in an enzymatic reaction. ADH catalyzes the oxidation of ethanol to acid aldehyde, evolved as a mechanism to break down alcohol formed by foods and bacteria in the digestive tract. Humans have at least six ADH enzyme types. All are dimers, have zinc ions as a cofactor. In yeast and bacteria, ADH is involved in fermentation, changing pyruvate to acid aldehyde and CO2, and ultimately to ethanol. 